every year brings more news about how the weather has gone mad. Climate change is one of the catchwords of the early 21st century. Rainforests are on the retreat and deserts are growing. Ice shields that have existed for thousands of years melt like butter in the sun. Europe's glaciers are thawing and violent floods wash everything away. Our environment is changing before our very eyes and we call it global warming. Tropical and subtropical animals and plants are already spreading and some have even gained a permanent foothold in our parts of the world. Native and immigrant species are going to have to find a new balance with each other, one that has not yet been struck. Presently, there are about 1,000 species living in Austria that weren't here before. Immigrant, stowaway, naturalized citizen, modern times create new pathways for these exotic aliens. Many people believe that our local wild animals have always lived here, but it's not that simple. The brown hare, for example, is considered a native. A former stepper inhabitant, he also settles comfortably in cultivated landscapes. But it was human intervention that caused him to spread extensively when the forests of the Middle Ages were cleared to create farmland. Roe deer are also part of our familiar natural surroundings. They are adaptable and have learned to survive in woods and meadows. And red deer might as well be referred to as our true ancestral deer, having roamed our forests since primeval days. But deer are far from being all the same. These shovel-shaped antlers distinguish the fallow deer. They are regarded as exotic here, being originally native to Asia. Their settlement in Austria may well date back to the time of the Romans. Although it isn't known for certain, this exotically iridescent bird may also have been released by the Romans. The pheasant. It is originally from the Middle East and East Asia. By the 15th century, at the latest, the pheasant had spread all over Central Europe. And this animal hasn't been living here forever either, though it's hard to believe. The black rat is a true alien invader that hails originally from Africa. It too followed in the tracks of the Romans and reached Austria about 2,000 years ago, where in the Middle Ages it spread the Black Death. A number of true native species, however, one would think must have escaped from a zoo. The European ground squirrel seems outlandish and reminiscent of North Africa's prairie dogs. Nonetheless, this member of the squirrel family has been with us since the end of the last ice age. It's been known for some time that not even the Austrian mountain ranges represent an insurmountable barrier for certain exotic aliens. The nocturnal's death's head hawk moth flies in from North Africa, covering a distance of over 1,200 miles. Upon arrival, it is attracted by the smell of beehives and usually succeeds in getting inside to find its favorite food, honey. Though severely attacked by the bees, it keeps feeding from the much-desired honeycombs with its short proboscis. Only small numbers of these animals come to Central Europe, however, 
and their damage to any beehives is negligible. Another nomad between worlds is the Red Admiral. It also travels hundreds of miles to Austria from southern lands. In late summer, droves of Red Admirals are attracted to the sweet windfall. Not everything that flutters is native in our forests or found its way here so directly. Some roots remain mysterious. The Japanese oak silk moth, which can grow up to six inches long, is originally from southern China and Japan. These large butterflies were imported to Europe long ago to produce so-called tussa silk. The cocoon of the chrysalis delivers the raw material. Over time, specimens that escaped established independent populations in Slovenia and Hungary. The females spread their scent, which attracts males over a distance of several miles. The presence of the Japanese oak silk moth has been confirmed in the Austrian federal states of Carinthia, Styria and Burgenland. Its reproduction rate, particularly in southern Europe, is reported to be increasing. Even on first glance, this mammal looks foreign. The raccoon. Its traditional home is North America. But as early as in 1934, several of them escaped from German fur farms. In 2007 alone, eight specimens were culled in Austria. Whether its eating habits threaten native animals is still under discussion. The native noble crayfish is at the top of the raccoon's menu, but crayfish's numbers have already been declining for decades. Their decreasing reproduction rates go hand in hand with the general decrease in water quality, and the loss of natural banks means that fewer and fewer young crayfish survive. Above all, crayfish require a rich diversity of shore areas where they are protected from numerous predators. Meanwhile, there are exotic relatives among the crayfish family, like the signal crayfish. Its original home is in the United States, and it has a strong resistance to the crayfish plague. Science's enthusiasm for introducing this hardy crayfish has taken a turn for the worse. However, the signal crayfish is squeezing out its native cousins more and more. As recent research shows, and though it doesn't contract the crayfish plague itself, the signal crayfish carries the disease and transmits it to the Austrian species. In late summer, the splendid blossoms of Himalayan balsam at the edge of the water catch one's eye. But this plant is far from native. It's from the distant Himalayas. Decades ago, the Himalayan balsam already grew wild after escaping German gardens and continued its triumphal procession all across Europe. Though visually rather pleasing, it outcompetes any other vegetation getting in its way. A similar nuisance is the Japanese knotweed, which is somewhat reminiscent of lilac and very popular with insects. Nevertheless, it's an invader from the Eastern Asia and one that seems to evade any attempt at controlling it. It creates a kind of wild monoculture swallowing any other green. The scarlet dragonfly is an obvious example of the ongoing climate change. Known to need warmth, it used to be endemic only to Vienna and Lower Austria. But in 2007, its presence has been confirmed in all of Austria's federal states.
The Vakau Valley at the River Danube has always been climatically favoured and represents a warm island for numerous Mediterranean species. The terraced vineyard's natural stone walls heat up tremendously in the noonday sun, which is exactly to the taste of the European green lizard. This lizard has a particular need for heat, since its preferred temperature is over 86 degrees Fahrenheit. And that alone makes it clear why it is mainly found in the southern parts of Central Europe. Even a small scorpion species is able to exist in the mild microclimate of the Vakao. And its enemies are southerners too, such as the praying mantis, which is another example of the global spread of invasive species due to climate change. Formerly limited to Austria's south and east, the praying mantis was first reported in Upper Austria in the year 2000. And in 2003, one specimen was even found over 3,300 feet above sea level. Much more in the public eye is the spread of certain eight-legged creepy crawlies, such as the flashy wasp spider. Its main habitat are the Mediterranean regions. Only 20 years ago, it was found in just a few regions of Austria. The black widow's venom is deeply rooted in folklore, and several subspecies of this spider are represented in southern Europe. Experts predict that it will spread with the continuation of global warming but when it will weave its first nets in Austria remains to be seen. Parts of the family, however, have already arrived. So-called false black widows are increasingly populating the south of Austria. In recent years, one eight-legged creature that is also expected to extensively increase its habitat due to global warming made the headlines. The yellow sack spider, whose bite can be painful and isn't always harmless. Its widest range is in the southern parts of Central Europe, but it is also showing up in regions of Austria's Carinthia. In the warm open terrain, it hides between plant stalks. Here, the females defend their nest. But for humans, there is rarely any danger. Poison animal expert Helga Happ explains. The yellow sack spider is poisonous like any other spider, yet even though its bite is painful and unpleasant for a healthy adult, it is by no means a life-threatening affair. This has really been blown out of proportion by the media, creating a completely unnecessary hysteria. In midsummer, hundreds of baby spiders hatch from their silk egg sacs. They remain under their mother's protection for a while, and she defends her hatchlings against any troublemakers. With the ongoing increase of passenger and freight traffic, the world has long since become a global village. And within hours, exotic aliens can reach Europe and Austria from their tropical homes. Fruit and vegetable cargoes occasionally contain dangerous stowaways. Sometimes even large exotic aliens, such as the tarantula, slip between the bananas. Despite refrigerated transport, many a spider has survived its trip to Europe. Regardless of the spider's size, the tarantula's bite is only in the rarest of cases dangerous. Newspaper reports about other more poisonous spiders surviving their accidental trip to Austria are increasing. 
Only in the most extreme cases do they pose a threat for humans. But the Brazilian wandering spider, or banana spider, is one of these cases. In its home country, it endangers banana harvesters particularly. The spiders feel threatened by vibrations in their home and bite the apparent troublemaker, resulting in serious poisoning. However, all of these exotic spiders are unable to permanently survive in Austria. For once the temperature drops below freezing, it's sudden death for them. Big waterways like the Danube have always been traveling routes for immigrants from distant countries. Among them, the beluga, a species of the sturgeon family that roams the Danube's Black Sea Delta, and that in the 19th century ventured as far north as Vienna. The beluga is one of the world's largest freshwater fish and can reach a size of up to 30 feet. After the Great River Regulation in 1870, the beluga's migrations rapidly declined. Today, their migrations here have ended. The Danube is still a main thoroughfare for exotic aliens. In contrast to centuries ago, today's animals catch a free ride with modern shipping. Many cargo vessels have come a long way directly from the Danube Delta. And frequently, ballast water from the Black Sea Basin is pumped out upon arrival at their destination. Thus, fish spawn from Romania reach Austrian waters. Some are snatched up by hungry mouths, but others find shelter between the rocks of the river shores and thrive. The so-called round goby was non-existent in the Austrian Danube before the year 2000. It can grow up to a length of 9.7 inches and is a bottom-dwelling fish that feeds on various invertebrates and small fish. After just eight years, this exotic alien has spread throughout large parts of the Austrian Danube and advances into all its tributaries. Systematic fishing sheds light on the round goby population density and how the newcomers are getting along in foreign waters. Apparently, they keep conquering new territory. One reason for their success may well be their modest way of life. Mussels arrived in Austria by a particularly sly and inconspicuous path. The zebra mussel was accidentally introduced into the Romanian part of the Danube by means of old ship cranes that were employed in the construction of the Egyptian Suez Canal. The mussels reached Austria in the proverbial toe of the ships, attached to their hulls and ropes. And this shellfish has been known in Austria only since 1999, the so-called corbicula. It is considered an invasive species in the Danube because its original home is East Asia. Whether local mussel populations are being injured by this stranger has not yet been conclusively determined. 
their secretive lives and hard shells may mean that they have few natural enemies. For the goosander, such hard food is definitely out of the question. The goosander is an invader from the north. The greatest distribution of these two-foot-long fish hunters is in Norway and Sweden. They rarely breed in Austria. But if the ongoing climate change results in the planet generally getting warmer, these northerners, according to experts, may abandon their local breeding grounds altogether. The old Danube in Vienna on a normal midsummer day, when the cool water calls for a swim. But some say it's not that refreshing anymore. The water seems to be getting warmer every year. And perhaps there is some truth to it, this climate change. Once the water temperature rises above 77 degrees Fahrenheit, conditions are reminiscent of the Adriatic Sea. Jellyfish alert. But where are they coming from? In fresh water? There are indeed freshwater jellyfish, also known as hydromedusae. With a diameter of barely over an inch, they are tiny compared to the saltwater relatives. Nevertheless, many bathers don't want to come anywhere near them for fear of being stung. But it's safe to give the all clear. Their stinging tentacles are microscopically small and can't harm humans in any way. The question remains, where are the Hydromedusae from? And what has made them appear more frequently over recent summers? To this day, there is no consensus amongst experts about the origins of these translucent water creatures. The most current opinion is that they accompanied water plants from the Chinese Yangtze River and ultimately ended up in the Danube. During the last hot summers, their numbers exploded and they became particularly noticeable. Certain relations of the Hydra Medusae have always been native to Austria the freshwater hydra. A mere tenth of an inch in diameter, these fragile creatures are unable to hover freely in the water. They remain firmly attached to the ground. The hydra is absolutely harmless and feeds on plankton. And this begs yet another question. Are there already exotic aliens in Austria that can be harmful to humans? Our forests haven't been what they used to be for quite some time. The lives of forests and mushrooms are closely intertwined, and not everything that grows is a native here. More than half a century ago, exotic aliens like the bizarre octopus stinkhorn settled here. Its original home is New Zealand, but ever since it came to Austria, it kept spreading. Classified as inedible but not toxic, it poses no threat to human beings. A campsite in Braunau am Inn in Upper Austria. At first glance, an idyllic area. But one of the fiercest enemies of Austria's native forests is up to mischief, the Asian longhorn beetle. Its first discovery in Europe was here, in 2001, followed by another sighting in Germany near Passau in 2004. 
The bodies of these large black insects are typically one to one and a half inches, and the male's antenna are almost twice as long. Their larvae were most likely imported with packing crates from Asia. The larvae bore tunnels deep into a tree's heartwood. These tunnels can be several inches in diameter and disrupt the transport of nutrients and water. The tree is seriously damaged. Its leaves begin to wilt. Even trees several centuries old can perish of the Asian longhorn beetle. This gray forest pest is a topic of research in the Austrian Federal Forest Office. The spread of this alien invader must be stopped by any means, as it poses a serious new threat to the entire Austrian forest. And there is yet another stranger that can no longer be controlled. Most of us have already made its acquaintance. Arion Lusitanicus, the Spanish slug. Originally imported from Western Europe, it keeps spreading relentlessly. Every allotment gardener knows this pest because the Spanish slug isn't fussy and eats almost everything. Preferably salad, of course. Slugs are hermaphrodites. Consequently, their reproduction rate is high. They can produce as many as 400 eggs at a time. And due to ever milder winters, most of these offspring survive. Meanwhile, the Spanish slug plays an integral part of the changing of entire ecosystems. Recent research confirms that it crowds out native species like the burgundy or edible snail from their habitats. But supposedly, one evil can be eradicated by another. The plan is for one alien invader to finish off the other. Indian runner ducks are known to be exceptionally gifted slug exterminators. Yet they aren't natives either, but originate from Southeast Asia. These ducks are finding more and more of a following because the Spanish slug is their meal of choice. The birds don't seem to mind the slug's bitter taste. The fact that more and more exotic aliens are gaining a permanent foothold with us isn't always due to immigration. Sometimes we add to their numbers by abandoning alien species ourselves. Seeing European pond turtles in the Danube wetlands, however, isn't necessarily proof of species invasion. It's still a little known fact that the European pond turtle is a native of the Danube wetlands near Vienna. In the wild, they are usually extremely shy and difficult to observe. But occasionally, they will also settle in parks where they grow accustomed to the presence of human beings. Characteristic of the European pond turtle is its yellow spotted shell. A growing number of their distant relatives are splashing in Austria's native ponds. The red-eared slider is getting more common too.
It's a native of the eastern United States. Its home territory stretches south all the way to the north of Mexico. Red-eared sliders cope well with the Austrian climate and are hardy, feeding on worms, small animals and fish. And these reptiles are abandoned altogether. It's always the same old story. The pets are no longer wanted, or they simply grow too big. For the American red-eared slider can reach a maximum shell length of more than 10 inches. In 2005, their first successful reproduction in the wild occurred. Jurassic Park in miniature. But the unscrupulous abandonment of exotic aliens in Austria is nothing new, and some species have held their ground for more than a century. As early as in 1880, the six to eight inch long North American pumpkin seed was introduced to European waters. It makes regular appearances in Austria too, having found a new home in the Danube wetlands, as well as in the Wörthersee, where it prefers the shallow banks that warm considerably in the summer. Predatory fish usually avoid pumpkin seeds due to their sharp spines in the dorsal and anal fins. In any case, the pumpkin seed is a splendid sight, which can't be said about all animals immigrating into Austria. Over the past years, several types of tick that were previously rare in Austria are on the advance. One of them is the brown dog tick, originally from Africa. It reached as far as Austria by means of pets. Since it requires warmth to procreate, it is frequently found in animal shelters where it prefers to attack dogs. Another of these advancing tick species is Dermacenta reticulatus. It may have come into Austria through Eastern European countries. Favored by a mild climate, it continues to spread through marshlands, wetlands and mixed woodlands. That ticks are posing a potential danger to humans is a well-established fact. Any wanderers through natural surroundings always run the risk of contact with these tiny eight-legged creatures and the serious diseases they may carry. For more than 30 years, there have been vaccinations against the so-called tick-borne encephalitis, also called TBE, a much dreaded form of meningitis. Yet in 2007, more than 40 cases were logged in Austria. Ticks are blood-sucking parasites, which is how they transmit the pathogenic agents. But ticks don't limit themselves to human hosts alone. Domestic and wild animals are attacked as well. Once a tick has sucked enough blood, it releases its victim and drops off. 
However, the invasive Dermacenta reticulatus now carries a disease with malaria-like symptoms that is frequently transmitted to domestic animals and pets. So far, this disease is still rare in humans in Central Europe and contracted almost exclusively by patients without a spleen. The circumstance apparently makes them more susceptible to an infection. The fact that global warming brings changes and uncertainty is evident in many habitats. Plants react particularly sensitive to even minute changes, especially those that grow in extreme conditions such as in the Alps, above the timberline. Utilizing the increase or decrease in this plant's numbers as a climate sensor was a groundbreaking idea of the Department of Conservation Biology, Vegetation and Landscape Ecology of the University of Vienna. The establishment of the worldwide long-term observation network in alpine environments, named Gloria, was initiated by Georg Grabherr. Yeah, Gloria. Gloria is an international research program initiated by the University of Vienna and composed of 60 stations throughout the world, all located in high mountain regions, because the animals and plants there live in some of the coldest areas where life can exist and any temperature changes ought to be particularly obvious. But there is also another important reason. The high mountain regions, apart from some very minor exceptions of human intervention, are still largely untouched. So what we are doing here is probably the most exact method of studying the effects of global climate change. Meanwhile, research into the environmental conditions of one particular mountain region at about 6,560 feet above sea level has been conducted for the second time. And if the climate forecasts predicting a temperature rise in the alpine region of several degrees should indeed turn out to be correct, this could result in a serious threat to all alpine ecosystems. Indications that this process is already underway are one of the results of the Gloria project. We also conducted our own research at the Schreinkogel in the Stubai Alps, where we determined at 9,840 feet above sea level that while new species aren't moving in, the populations of those that usually live further down the mountain are increasing, which is already a clear indicator of the climate change's effects on the high mountain region's vegetation. But there are other bioindicators for the subtle climate changes just outside our front doors. Migratory birds, for instance. One swallow doesn't make a summer, as the saying goes. Yet the swallow's migration seems to start earlier each year. And in many places, they return from their winter quarters up to 10 days sooner as well, which causes a shift in their breeding season. Research on the black redstart shows that it breeds much earlier than it did just a few years ago. The date they take off for the south has shifted too, and more and more frequently an additional generation is reared. The climate change-induced behavior is also a topic of research at the Ornithological Auring Society in Hohenhau in Lower Austria. Ornithologist Christian Schulze explains. Tagging stations are a means of acquiring detailed information about bird migrations. The data that were collected over the last decades indicate quite clearly that global warming apparently has a massive effect on their behavior and that individual species have significantly changed the timing of their passage. Some arrive much earlier and start breeding sooner than they did only 20 years ago. And occasionally, some of them leave earlier than they used to a few decades ago as well. 
als das noch vor einigen Jahrzehnten der Fall war. Storks are traditional migratory birds. Apart from the well-known white stork, another closely related species lives in Austria, the black stork. It prefers to avoid human company and breeds only in stick nests high in trees, which the white stork used to do as well until it sought the proximity of humans. Young storks are more and more frequently reported to be heading for their African winter quarters late or not at all. This behavior hasn't been closely examined yet, but it's already clear that instead of migrating to Africa, many storks are spending the mild winter in Spain. Day in, day out, huge sheet metal birds arrive from all over the world. And non-stop flights regularly carry hundreds of thousands of passengers to exotic regions where this animal lives. The Anopheles mosquito. Every year, it is responsible for some 1.5 to 2.7 million deaths. Its empire stretches across all continents, though it is found most frequently in tropical regions. Wherever moisture and swamps exist, the mosquito flourishes in multitudes. The Anopheles can't survive without water. An entire development cycle depends on it. Africa remains one of the strongholds of malaria. Many regions near the equator are heavily infested, and even big game animals suffer from the ever-present mosquitoes that pursue them at every turn. Particularly at dusk and all through the night, Countless armies swarm out in pursuit of just one goal, to find mammals and suck their blood. Mosquitoes have extremely fine senses that enable them to locate their victims. And in most cases, their sting remains unnoticed. Quickly, their abdomen begins to swell tight with blood. Only if they manage to snatch this meal of blood are the females capable of developing their eggs. And even if the annoying insect is caught, it's usually too late. For at the moment it pierces the skin, the mosquito infects its victim with tiny single-celled organisms that destroy the red blood cells and cause the recurrent fevers of malaria. Austria also has extensive wetlands, and the question naturally arises, could the Anopheles survive here too, or only in the tropics? The answer is simple. The malaria-bearing mosquito is already here. Most of Austria's mosquitoes are species that are unable to transmit malaria. There are hundreds of them. But the Anopheles has always lived here. About 2,000 years ago, during Roman times, the Danube wetlands were heavily malaria-infested, and the legendary conquerors found an insurmountable enemy in these tiny insects.
In the Middle Ages and up into modern times, malaria was everywhere. The mosquitoes easily got inside rooms and buildings as people were completely unaware about the danger they presented. Thousands lay in malarial fevers without knowing where their illness came from. The number of infected individuals can't even be estimated. Up until the 19th century, humans living and working near the water were particularly at risk. In 1919, no less than 3,700 malaria cases were reported in Vienna alone. In 1946, their number dropped to about 140 cases. And by 1950 at the latest, Austria was regarded to be malaria-free. Anopheles are still amongst us, though no longer infected with pathogenic agents and are considered harmless. Parasitologist Herbert Auer explains. Theoretically, the Viennese airport's proximity to the Danube wetlands would indeed facilitate the spreading and establishment of malaria in Austria. But that would require a sufficient influx of infected mosquitoes from malaria endemic regions into Austria. And that, subsequently, a large enough number of humans were actually infected. Thus, from the current perspective, it is rather unlikely that malaria would be able to regain a foothold in Austria. Modern medicine would immediately terminate the infection's vicious cycle and the mosquito alone couldn't cause any damage. Only the blood of infected humans turn it into the feared transmitter of malaria. As for the future of Austria's natural environments and on the verge of a significant global climate change, we likely need to prepare ourselves for many a surprise. Some of them may even be welcome. The European bee-eater, for example, formerly a rare nesting bird, has been able to expand its population considerably. Due to the ever milder climate, this colorful exotic alien reached an all-time record of more than 500 breeding couples in 2007. In the end, however, being seen as an invader is simply a question of how long a species has already been able to remain. Less than 3,000 years ago, neither poppies nor rapeseed originally from Eurasia were native to Austria. And since even the apricot, a famous landmark of the Austrian Wachau Valley, traces its origins all the way back to northern China, one really has to wonder, couldn't it also be a good thing that such exotic aliens are visiting us?